Crews have now found the data recorder of the ship, which crashed into a major bridge yesterday, causing the bridge to collapse. Officials are looking into whether dirty fuel may have caused the vessel to lose power. Six missing construction workers who were on the Francis Scott Key Bridge at the time are now presumed dead, and rescue efforts have turned into a recovery operation. These are the live pictures that we can bring you from the scene. It's 9 a.m. local time, uh, as well as that recovery operation. The other focus now is the investigation into what went wrong. The vessel, the Dali, is registered in Singapore and the port authority there says it passed two inspections last year. The container vessel lost power after departing from Baltimore's port, causing it to crash into the bridge. The governor of Maryland has been speaking in the last hour and says it's imperative that the bridge is rebuilt to support the U.S. economy, but his current focus is on the recovery efforts. The top priority for me right now is still the recovery. We've got to bring these families closure. Uh, I, I promise these families that, that I, would, I would instruct every single asset that we have to focus on that search and rescue, uh, air, land and sea assets to focus on search and rescue. Now that, um, now that we've transitioned to the recovery phase, my promise to them is this, I will devote every single resource to making sure that you receive closure. Governor of Maryland, Wes Moore. Well, let's cross live to our correspondent, Tom Bateman. In Baltimore, it looks like a pretty uh, murky morning there behind you, Tom. Um, talk to us about what's happening there out on the water and, and the discovery of this uh, data recorder from the vessel. Yeah, another, another very, very cold day. And of course, it is the frigid temperatures in the river here that have been one of the factors why we heard from officials last night that they were calling off the rescue part of this operation and it now becomes recovery work. That meaning that uh, the six men that were still unaccounted for have been presumed dead by the authorities here. And we had at the same time uh, the head of the National Transportation Safety Board uh, announcing that some of their officials, as well as the Coast Guard, had managed to board the vessel. And crucially, they have recovered the data recorder from the ship. Now, that may be crucial because one of the lines of inquiry they're looking at is whether or not what they described as dirty fuel could have contributed to this power blackout on the ship. Maritime experts say uh, that contaminated fuel can cause uh, uh, problems with the ship's main power generators. And we heard also from uh, the American Pilots Association. These are um, uh, include harbour pilots, those people that uh, board a ship to get it in and out of uh, port in places like uh, this. Now, they have said that there were two pilots in control of the vessel. Uh, that it lost power, that they ordered the rudder to steer hard to the left and drop the left anchor to try and prevent um, this collision. And that crucially, they radioed uh, that mayday call, which alerted the police to the fact that uh, the collision may be imminent, and therefore they tried to stop the traffic going over the bridge. And certainly that is being treated locally as a really crucial moment that may have saved uh, many lives in this incident. And um, uh, I don't know how many local people you've had a chance to talk to, Tom, but, you know, l looking out on that scene today must still be utterly shocking for them to, to see a, a very familiar scene looking so different. Yeah, we spoke to a lot of uh, people during the day yesterday, people uh, especially on the uh, riverside here who uh, their homes line this area. Uh, you know, this bridge went up in the late 1970s. It was described to one of the residents here to me yesterday as the pride and glory of Baltimore. Um, not only was it absolutely crucial to the operation of the port, which supports thousands of jobs, it is the biggest port uh, on the east coast of the US, bringing in hundreds of thousands of uh, cars um, and all sorts of uh, products and agricultural materials every year. But it is part of the fabric of life of Baltimore uh, in that it connects um, richer to poorer neighborhoods. It was seen as a, something that uh, enabled um, people to uh, get work, social mobility. So it's really been a, a devastating um, loss. And at the same time, more details have been emerging about the six construction workers. These were six men who were up on the bridge doing roadworks at night, uh, filling potholes in the road on the bridge. 
Um, now we know that each of them was from Central America. Uh, we saw some of the families before they were going into a briefing um, yesterday, uh, heading into a briefing of the local uh, transport authority. It was shortly after that that, that it was then announced that the uh, rescue part of this was being cooled off. Uh, as I've said, because a key part of the problems for the divers are that all of the mangled wreckage in the water means it's very dangerous for them, and that's why um, it's you know so far they have had uh, no success. Um, in finding anyone alive and this is now as they have said the divers are still in the water but this has now turned to a recovery operation. Tom thank you for that update. Tom Bateman in Baltimore and Guy Platten is Secretary General of the International Chamber of Shipping that's a global trade association for ship owners and operators. I asked him a little earlier what the implications of this will be. I mean, Baltimore is, is going to be shut now for, for some while, I, I would imagine. The, the main shipping lane is blocked by the debris from the bridge, so it's going to take some time to get that cleared and for the port to be reopened. Uh, we know there's ships stuck in Baltimore now, and of course they won't be able to leave, but the ships coming to Baltimore are starting to divert to other ports on, on, on the coast there. And so there will be obviously some disruption and some delays because there'll be increased volumes, but it, it, overall uh, the, the supply chain will work itself out uh, except, of course, that, that Baltimore is a, is, is a key port and uh, that will cause some delays as a result. Any idea how long it's going to take to actually get the, the ship removed? Obviously, there's the wider question of, of replacing the bridge, but in terms of dealing with the, the ship itself, any idea how long that might take? I would imagine that won't take as long uh, uh, because the, the, the ship, from what I can see, is still afloat. Um, so uh, they'll they'll be able to 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 to, to get her to get her off. But I think more importantly is going to be the the actual main channel. That's the main channel to go out of Baltimore. There will be no doubt large sections of the bridge still on the seabed. Um, that will have to be cleared. They'll have to have specialist equipment, specialist barges to come in to get uh, to get that, and that'll take some time to put in place. So I imagine this will go on for for quite some days, if not weeks, before the uh, the, the channels reopen and shipping can once again come in and out and uh, in and out of the port. And then looking beyond Baltimore immediately and that region, what are the implications for, for trade more broadly? I think this is a, you know, it's more localised, it's particularly disruption. I mean, where we are seeing big disruptions, of course, is in the Red Sea, where we've got well over 80% of containered lines now uh, operating down the south coast of Africa, adding a couple of weeks of delay. We've seen, of course, what the effects are if, when the Suez Canal got blocked some three years ago. You know, that has a massive disruption. And even in places like the Panama Canal, which has got reduced numbers of sailings, are having disruption. They're having much more effect than perhaps this, this incident, which will be much more localised on, on the eastern seaboard. So um, there's a lot going on around the world, which are causing these disruptions. And, and of course, we always remember the seafarers are having to navigate through all of these. Guy Platten. Alex Del Sordo is the owner of the Anchor Bay East Marina and Hard Yacht Cafe, which is near the bridge. He's been helping locals who've been affected and he told me a short time ago that people are still stunned about what has happened. We have, actually right behind me here, we have uh, Baltimore County Fire Department. There's about nine, nine guys in here right now preparing to go out. And I know that last night we had a crew out till midnight last night working through the wreckage. And they're still in disbelief, but what I'm seeing is that they're starting to really come together with a plan. And there's there's just a, an overwhelming connection right now. All the entities that I'm seeing working here, the Coast Guard, the Fire Department, the police, they're starting to get really cohesive and it's pretty incredible to watch. Yeah, you uh, look out from the cafe on these waters, you row yourself uh, yeah. in these waters. Um, what does it look like out there today compared to a normal day? Well, uh, significantly less boat traffic, right? Um, you don't see the tankers out there at all. As I was coming in this morning, it was dark out, but normally you would see lights out on the horizon. There's very minimal boat traffic other than first responders. The water, you can't tell right now, but it's eerily calm. The tide is extremely high right now due to the uh, hot full moon that we had a couple days ago and the a lot of rain so it's an overcast day right now minimal boat traffic other than first responders and not a puff of wind out there not a puff 
Yeah, and obviously thinking of those construction workers on the bridge who now sadly uh, are, are presumed dead, as, as well as, of course, um, you know, a, a landmark for Baltimore gone and, and what that means for the city. Uh, uh, there's very little talk about um, the families other than this is just, it's just terrible. It, there's, there's more news coming every 15 minutes and the landmark, it, it's funny you say that someone, I was listening, I was having a conversation with someone this morning, one of the fire department uh, members, and they said uh, they would normally look out their window and would see this ginormous, beautiful bridge. And uh, they can't describe it. It's gone. It's not there anymore. And they just, they're still in disbelief. Alex Del Sordo in Baltimore.